What a remarkable year. All of us faced unprecedented disruption, challenge, and change. Too many have lost loved ones from the pandemic and from violence. Events here and around the country have awakened awareness about racial injustice. And as the economy has been in turmoil, families have faced wrenching struggles. But we've learned more about ourselves and about our neighbors. We've also learned about resilience, the remarkable ability of our residents and our community to rise to the challenges we face. Milwaukee has evolved, even with the challenges. In many ways, the changes we see are positive. I've seen more compassion, more understanding, and more kindness. But our story is best told from a variety of different perspectives. Each Milwaukeean brings a unique view, enlightened by personal experience and their own circumstances. Listen to their voices, their sentiments, and their stories. It's a fuller picture of our city and our journey. This last year has been very challenging for me because I'm a parish nurse and everything I do uh, centers around the spiritual aspect of many people. And the fact that the churches were not open um, this year was unprecedented because churches feed people, they shelter people, they provide coats and clothes for people in the winter. The last year for me has been a roller coaster ride of emotions and struggles, but also a lot of bright spots as I look at my community and as I look at this country and this world. The last year for me has been exciting, stressful, exhausting. It's shown me the power of what our communities can do uh, to help each other in a pandemic. It's been an extremely eye-opening year for me. We've all learned a lot over the course of, of 2020 and into 21, and those are lessons that I think we need to carry with us. 2020 taught us that our neighbors, our residents, the human beings that are around locally is who we have to trust and depend on, whether it was the nurses, the firemen, the first responders, those people impacted our life more than anyone else could. And we have each other, all we have is each other. One thing that I hope we carry forward as a lesson from the last year is to continue to remember that we don't exist, you know, within a bubble, that we are all so connected. The actual silver lining around what the COVID pandemic brought to our city was, there were new leaders who emerged. I believe the current leaders that we see in place did an effective job at least listening to these new leaders. You know, in order to be a good leader, I think you have to be a great listener. And I think that's what we saw. The way city leadership adapted to a changing environment was something I never anticipated. I'm just a small business owner and I often look at government as like overly slow and bureaucratic. But in the grand scheme of things, understanding that it took four months to mobilize almost half a million dollars for restaurant relief and for citizen hunger relief is kind of astonishing. I'm not sure I thought our city was capable of it, and I'm not sure I knew local leadership could just make decisions like that. It was very encouraging to see that in a moment of crisis, some of the rules got thrown out the window. I was impressed with the leadership in Milwaukee regarding the COVID crisis that we had, how open the leadership was. I think the city had has responded to the COVID crisis as well as they could. We took care of our sick and we are vaccinating our people. I think Milwaukee um, had a unique opportunity as it related to the COVID crisis. And overall, I, I feel that the city of Milwaukee responded via their leadership with transparency, very clear communication about what was happening, why it was happening, what our responsibilities were as citizens, the call to help from everyday people to our healthcare professionals uh, and have been very honest in terms of where we sit um, as a community as it relates to pandemic and has worked extremely hard to keep our community safe. What occurred in 2020 when it came to the Black Lives Matter movement and the social justice movement, 
I was, uh, first of all, impressed with the brothers and sisters who were out there marching, those who took the time, the energy, to really push forward an issue that's been with us for a very long time in this country. I think the impact that, that came about um, during that, that, that civil unrest and came about during the protesting was the fact that our business community and our philanthropic community, they're listening. I think that um, we are starting to forge a new road uh, in, in terms of what we want to see for Milwaukee as it relates to race and, and equity. My hope is that what comes out of the last year is something that's continued going forward towards more equity in Milwaukee, that Milwaukee becomes a city where everyone can prosper. Milwaukee's resilience has always been remarkable. And I know this too shall pass and we will come out Milwaukee strong. Milwaukee is resilient because of the people that live here. We're a really, really, really strong community of people with a really, really, really big voice. We're a tight knit community in, in a lot of ways. We have a lot of work to do, but when we come together, we can really move mountains, and, and I think that we'll do that. What am I looking most forward to when, when this pandemic has left our life? It's just the ability to, to enjoy this city, whether it's the bike trails, the, the lakefront, the restaurants, all of those fun things. So I just can't wait to be able to social uh, and gather with family and friends like the ways we used to do. What excites me is getting ready to go back out to the lakefront just where you can just walk around, sit down and watch the water, look at the water, and just meditate. It's the smallest things that make people happy. I look forward to celebrating together. We all have complaints, but I think the way that we burn off the residue of complaints is by celebrating together, being together, going on bike rides and going to parks and, and just being together and laughing and playing. The number one thing I'm most excited about is to go out to dinner. It's things like that that you took for granted before. And I truly believe a recovery, whatever that looks like, involves us getting outside, enjoying the weather, enjoying the festivals, enjoying the music, enjoying the food, and all the sights and sounds of our city. Milwaukee's heart is strong. This past year was an incredible strain on that heart but I think it's made us stronger. And so we have to keep modeling that behavior. This year can't be something that we're like, oh, thank God that's over. Let's never think about that again. It has to, to stay with us, if for no other reason than to remember to be better to one another. Yes, we are in the midst of an extraordinary time, a devastating pandemic, economic challenges, and a long-needed awakening on justice and racial equity. The social and economic challenges here are unlike anything Milwaukee or America has experienced in decades. But the people of Milwaukee have shown resilience. As all our lives faced upheaval, Milwaukee has shown its best qualities. So many people here have embraced the principles that make our city strong. Hard work, respect, honesty, and a drive for positive change. COVID-19 turned our lives upside down, impacting us in ways no one here had ever experienced. It brought death. Hundreds and hundreds of people lost their lives, our neighbors, our friends, and our family members. It brought lengthy, serious illness for others. The people who stepped up, taking on the disease and the dangers head on, have earned our gratitude. I think about the healthcare professionals, the emergency responders, and the public health workers who all mobilized to serve. Their attention to the good of the community saved lives. I also acknowledge the people who sacrificed in other ways. Many faced economic consequences from job loss. Normal social activities were put on hold. And for younger people and their teachers, traditional schooling was hugely disrupted. City government mobilized in a number of ways, including supporting local businesses with federal grants totaling in the tens of millions of dollars. Those grants preserved jobs, added stability to neighborhood business districts, and helped smaller local companies position themselves to emerge from the pandemic. Our health department has done extraordinary work, mobilizing to protect, 
test and vaccinate the people of Milwaukee on a scale none of us has ever seen. The expectations and scrutiny were high, and the Milwaukee Health Department rose to the occasion consistently. So many other parts of city government responded as well, offering technology, emergency medical response, workforce flexibility, and community outreach. We managed big elections, prepared for a national political convention, and kept the vital functions of city government humming. Milwaukee, like most of America, also faced an awakening. The image of George Floyd dying is now a permanent part of our collective memory. His death in Minneapolis pushed this community to reflect on violence and racism right here. There are too many examples of prejudice and the change that we need will come. In Milwaukee, we are installing new approaches to law enforcement. We are focused on accountability, evolving law enforcement culture and increasing community respect. But it is not just the police department. Throughout Milwaukee city government, we are raising awareness and taking action. With our new Office of Equity and Inclusion, we are advancing fairness and justice. And in every city department, we are pushing for improvement and accepting the responsibility to respect and include everyone, especially those who have been neglected and harmed in the past. The peaceful protests over the last year here in Milwaukee have led to change. Marchers have raised their voices and they have been heard. More issues lie in front of us, issues that demand our attention. After four consecutive years of declining homicides and shootings, we have seen a spike. Deadly violence is not just a police problem. It is a community problem that requires serious attention to responsible gun reform, investment in our young people, and allocating resources to address the social and economic pressures too many face. Our current violence demands attention to basic human decency. For city government, fiscal challenges loom ahead. Our pension commitments, particularly the generous benefits granted to police and firefighters, will cost tens of millions each year going forward. Without changes in law or bargaining agreements, we have no realistic option to raise funds. So already strapped city services will face cuts. Unfortunately, we are in an era in which misinformation and outright dishonesty are too common. When directed toward government, the institutions we rely on are undermined. I can state unequivocally, our elections are conducted with integrity. Our finances are also handled with integrity. And the people who work in city government consistently act with the best interests of our residents in mind. We are entering a positive chapter in the history of Milwaukee. Look at Milwaukee Tools' new location in the heart of the city, the largest influx of jobs from the suburbs in the history of Milwaukee. We are seeing new employment, more investment, more people choosing to be part of our community. I have a strong sense of optimism, a confidence in Milwaukee's future, and a real sense of pride in our people. Thank you, Milwaukee.